Matt R and some other fans have been asking if you could tell your side of the the Bruiser Brody versus Lex Luger cage okay. match. I got Lex's side, and he said after they talked, I've heard you say before that Lex is lying about that. Uh, so maybe well, I don't want to say lie, maybe you don't remember. This is what I remember. Now, Lex is relatively new in the business, you know. And, oh, Hiro Matsuda, the Japanese wrestler that uh, I mentioned er earlier, he was part of the Florida Championship Wrestling office. You know, he's one of the owners, a small owner of the company. Uh, so he trained Lex. And they thought Lex was going to be the next Ric Flair. Uh, they thought it was – and he did pretty well. He had that good body, but he wasn't that classy, classic of a worker. You know, it was hard for him to, you know. But he got over it to a certain extent. So I think it was a bad booking. What happened was a bad booking because uh, for a year they've been handpicking Lex's opponents, giving them, you know what I mean, making him a star, and, and he was developing uh, a personality. He was developing his skill, and he was also getting a little bit of a uh, not a cocky attitude. It was, you know, not a big shot. It, was, it went to his head a little bit. But Lex is a great guy. I like him. Um, so I think it was a bad bookie. They shouldn't have put Lex Luger, who's been getting his opponents handpicked for him, and they've been putting him over, they're making him a star, and all of a sudden they put him in a cage match out of the fucking blue. And uh Brody and I love Brody. Brody wasn't in territory, he was just passing through. You know how the guys would come in for the week, the world champion come in for a week, make the loop. Abdullah would come in for the week, make the loop. Fabulous Mula would come in for the week. The midgets would come in for the week. So Brody came in for the week and they put him with Lex Luger in the steel cage. And and Lex is kind of inexperienced and Bruiser Brody was temperamental. He had a big ego. He had been in the business for years. He's working with this young guy. They're trying to groom him and make him a big superstar. It was a bad booking. He should have put those together. Uh, and it wasn't Lex's fault, but Lex should have listened to Brody. And there was some miscommunication. And, and Lex was trying to do something in the ring. And Brody wasn't reacting. And, and, uh, he didn't actually beat him up physically real bad or nothing. He was a little stiff with him, but wouldn't sell for Lex or anything. And he said, Fonzie, what's going on? What's going on? You won't talk to me. You know, he got scared. He got scared. He said, Fonzie, what do I do? I said, well, grab me and throw me against the cage. I'll disqualify you or something or whatever. So he grabbed me, threw me. But we're in a cage. You know, so how could I disqualify him? So he threw me, and he just jumped over the cage. And all that, and I ring the bell and disqualified him or whatever I did. But it was a bad booking. It was a bad booking. That was the Florida Championship Wrestling's office fault for putting that match together. But look, we're still talking about it. That's the two biggest questions when I do like a fan fest or a convention or a podcast or a mod with the fabulous Canadian you Hannibal, who uh, got a big following, ask me these questions. That's the the biggest question I get about me and Beulah, where I fought Beulah and I got busted open and, and I got a little bit of uh, juice. And they talk about, they always ask me about the Lex Luger. I always tell them the same thing. It was a bad booking. And that was it, you know. Did anyone say anything to you after about the match, like the booker? Who was the booker for that night anyways? I think it was Wyoming Daniel maybe at that time. I went to a lot of bookers. No, not particular. What are they going to say? You know, they go talk to Brody if you're going to do it. You know, they didn't say what happened because they seen what happened. And actually, none of the big office personnel was there. You know, so uh, they heard about it. But no, not not really. They didn't say, oh, Fonzie, what happened? And, you know, I said, it was just a bad booking. I guess that and Lex ended up becoming a big star, you know, and making millions of dollars. Uh, and we all know what happened to Bruiser Brody. God bless him. I was, I loved Bruiser Brody. He was a big attraction, a big star. And, you know, to end up dying that way like he did was terrible, man. It shocked the wrestling world. We all felt so bad. In fact, yesterday I was in Tampa. That's where I live. 
and we have a Legends Lunch every couple months. And uh, Bruiser Brody's wife was there. She was accepting the award, of, you know, Legend Legend Award. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.